In October of 2017, a strange visitor was spotted in our solar system. It was unlike anything ever observed from Earth. Called by the Hawaiian name Oumuamua, this object continues to baffle scientists. For one, its brightness varied greatly every eight hours, suggesting that it was shaped either like a very long cigar or else a massive pancake. Space telescopes did not detect any heat or gases coming off the object, so to this day, no one can say for sure why it deviated from its expected trajectory and actually sped up as it was moving away from the sun. For Harvard professor Avi Loeb, the most logical explanation is also the most controversial. He believes Oumuamua was made by aliens. I am very thrilled to be speaking with Avi Loeb. He is the Frank B. Bard Jr. Professor of Science at Harvard University and also the author of a new book, Extraterrestrial. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, I, you know, Extraterrestrial focuses on the first interstellar object that we've ever detected in our solar system called Oumuamua. I remember when this was discovered, it was so exciting uh, back in October 2017. It was you know, short-lived, it kind of went out of the solar system fairly quickly, but it was just, you know, totally unprecedented. And the more we learned about it, the more weird this object seemed to be. So if it has an alien origin, if it is an artificial piece of technology, what type of technology do you think it most likely is? Well, we, we don't really know because we, we don't have enough uh, evidence. Perhaps it's uh, one point in a grid of objects that are similar to it, that are placed in interstellar space uh, for navigation purposes, to give you your coordinates when you're moving through interstellar space. That's one possibility. Another one is that it's a relay station uh, for communication. Instead of sending a very powerful signal, just like we do on Earth, you can transmit the signal from one station to another. And this is one of the stations along the, the way. Another possibility is that it's a probe. I find it hard to believe that anyone is spying on us because uh, it took uh, this object uh, more than 10,000 years to cross the solar system. And 10,000 years ago, we weren't that interesting. I would argue that even now we're not that interesting. Perhaps in the future we'll be more interesting. The other most likely option is that it's just space trash. You know, we sent out Voyager 1, Voyager 2, New Horizons. In a billion years, they will become trash. They will not function anymore. And most objects in space are probably billions of years old. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about why we weren't able to get a, um, a little bit more uh, high resolution imagery. You mentioned it would be ideal, of course, to be able to launch a camera or, I mean, if next time this happens, maybe launch a probe of some kind that could interact with such an object. But what were we studying Oumuamua with and why did it give us kind of just a very brief sketch of, of these properties? The key in doing science is to get as much evidence as possible uh, because it can guide you and sometimes nature's imagination is greater than ours. So as scientists, we really want the most data possible. And uh, the worst one can do as a scientist is to say, I know the answer in advance, I don't need any evidence. That was true of the day in the days of Galileo when the philosophers knew that the, that the sun moves around the earth and they didn't want to look through Galileo's telescope. And by that, they maintained their ignorance and, and they put Galileo in house arrest. The earth continued to move around the sun, as Galileo was arguing. Reality doesn't care whether we ignore it or not. And so we really want as much evidence as possible and not to rely on prejudice, not to say it's never aliens, it's always rocks. Because that would resemble a caveman that is used to playing ro with rocks and when presented with a cell phone would argue that the cell phone is just a shiny rock. We don't want to be that caveman. In his new book, Extraterrestrial, Professor Loeb takes a confrontational stance with his fellow astrophysicists. He accuses them of being too narrow-minded to consider the theory that Oumuamua is an object designed and built by another intelligent form of life in the cosmos. I should mention an anecdote that uh, there was a seminar at Harvard about Oumuamua. And when I left the room with a colleague of mine that worked on solar system rocks for decades, uh, that colleague said, Oumuamua is so weird, I wish it never existed. 
<laughs> which to me was appalling because actually the fun in doing science, you know, just as, as I still want to maintain my childhood curiosity in doing science. So the, the biggest fun is actually in finding something new, in, in uh, getting something that doesn't quite line up with what you expected. That That's the experience that makes science worth doing. Uh, it's, you know, it's not uh, to glorify ourselves, to show it's, science is not a sandbox in which we demonstrate that we are smart, which is pretty much what most of my colleagues are, are using science for uh, in order to get honors and awards. And they line up with whatever other people say so that people on selection committees will choose them, give them support and so forth. That's not what science is about. It's not about the number of likes on Twitter, about you know getting support from, from our colleagues. It's about, it's about uh, understanding nature. Coming back to your question about the Muamua itself, it was just a few hundred feet or 100, 200 meters in size. And at the distance that it was at, a fraction of the Earth-Sun separation, uh, even our best telescopes cannot resolve it. So uh, we couldn't really uh, say what it looks like other than it's a dot of light with a variable brightness because the object is tumbling and reflecting sunlight with a, a varying uh, area projected on the sky. And we could model that and uh, infer that it's most likely flat. But beyond that, we don't know anything. What has been the counter argument from your colleagues who believe it has a natural origin? How do What do they think that it is that would uh, satisfy all of the kind of odd characteristics you've described here? One suggestion was it's a hydrogen iceberg frozen hydrogen so that mm. uh, when it evaporates you don't see the hydrogen it's transparent you still get cometary activity the only problem is well first we haven't seen uh, hydrogen icebergs before uh, we don't know if it's possible to produce them in molecular clouds but the biggest problem is um, they would evaporate very quickly along their journey by absorbing starlight this is not a viable proposal because such an such objects would evaporate the, at the size scale of uh, Oumuamua. Another proposal was a dust bunny, you know, the kind of thing you find at a household except <laughs> the size of a football field. <laughs> uh, a collection of dust particles a hundred times less dense than air. So it's porous enough that the reflection of sunlight will push it because it has a large area for its weight. Mm. The problem with that is, imagine a cloud that is a hundred times less dense than air, so less dense than the steam coming off a boiling pot by a factor of a hundred. And uh, imagine that uh, the size of a football field and tumbling over eight hours and going through interstellar space for millions of years I have a hard time believing that such a thing would survive the journey, that it would be st a stable enough uh, structure to hold on to itself. So when people say in the mainstream, they say, I don't care about the details, it's probably natural, and just ask the experts. Well, we ask the experts, that's the idea. These are the ideas they came up with. It's always associated with someone, something that we have never seen before. And I say, if it's nothing that we have seen before, why not contemplate an artificial origin? At least it should be put on the table. However, the mainstream community says, no, it should not be discussed. This is ridiculous. We should not even consider that possibility. And when you don't consider possibilities, you will never discover them. Mm -hmm. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And given the significance of discovering relics of another civilization, that would indicate that we are not the smartest kid on the block. You know, I think it's it's our obligation to entertain these possibilities. In his book, Professor Loeb challenges us to accept what he calls Umuamua's wager. The idea of this wager is that instead of just dismissing it as a weird space rock, science is better served by accepting his theory that Umuamua is a piece of alien technology that visited our solar system. Even if we can't prove it right now, by acting like it's true, we will be better prepared to study other interstellar objects that enter the solar system. What are some of the broader um, implications of taking Oumuamua's wager? Because I did think that was a very interesting part of the book. And um, 
you know, beyond just the fact that uh, it has relevance to this object, how do you think taking that wager affects the entire search for an extraterrestrial intelligence? After decades of studying astronomy, the one message I very frequently get from the sky is stay modest. Mm. Because, you know, we sit on a planet that is one of 10 to the power 20 habitable planets within the observable volume of the universe. It's more than the number of grains of sand on all beaches on Earth. Uh, We live only for 100 years, which is one part in 100 million of the age of the universe. You know, how can we be arrogant? That's really ridiculous. And why should we have the ambition to feel superior relative to other people? You know, the faults of human history, racism, I mean, it's completely ridiculous in the big scheme of things, you know, judging a person by the color of their skin. I mean, humans are clearly not showing intelligence. You know, that's one reason I I look for intelligence in the sky, uh, because I don't find it here on Earth. That's also another reason to search for alien civilizations, because we can, first, we can learn from them. If they are more advanced than we are, we can get answers to questions for which we we don't have an answer right now. Um, And that would save us time. We can also learn about technologies that would take us a million years to develop. They already developed them. So it might feel like cheating in in an exam, looking over the shoulder of the Mm -hmm. student next to you. But uh, if you save a million years in doing so, it's worth it. And the other thing is that we might find the civilizations that are dead. And we can figure out why and get our act together so that we don't share the same fate. So it's sort of a history lesson as well. Almost like a uh, alien archaeology kind of thing. That's what I first thought of with Oumuamua and your um, your hypothesis on it is that if this is a relic of a long dead civilization, that's um, very sad, but also has its own instruction as well. Exactly. And then, you know, we looked for radio signals from space uh, for many decades and uh, that is equivalent to speaking on the phone. You need the counterpart to be alive to have a conversation. But if you find uh, a letter in the mail, if USPS is very slow, the per- person who sent the letter might not be alive anymore. <laughs> and that offers a great advantage in the sense that you can go back in time. So when we get the uh, trash in space from a civilization that existed billions of years ago, they don't need to be alive at the time that we find it. And uh, we basically sum up over the entire history of the Milky Way galaxy in terms of civilizations. Most stars form before the sun. The sun is a relative late comer, so uh, we might uh, find evidence for those old civilizations that existed that are not around anymore. By simply checking every object that enters into our backyard from outside the solar system, you know, we don't need to make the journey. The object made that journey for us over mm-hmm. a long period of time. And we just need to search our backyard for all these relics, for all these things that do not quite look like a comet or an asteroid, for all those things that make my colleagues say, I wish they never existed. 